podcast where we talk about things uh i'm chris i'm jazz sequence on the internet uh with me as always is gary who's binary gary on the internet in that direction uh and um uh, allison who's allison plus on the internet um yeah here we are um and i will uh guiltily admit that uh um I, we sort of, uh, I don't know, I guess broke quarantine by going camping uh, over the weekend. Did you do this camping outside or did you do it in like a... No, it was outside at an actual campground and we thought it was going to be a lot more spread out than it was and it wasn't oh. in Memorial Day weekend because that was also the weekend that uh, my sister-in-law's birthday fell on. Oh, uh, right. Um, and there's a lot of people and no one was wearing masks and so we were just sort of writing with the recent um discoveries i guess or results or studies that have shown that um no or almost no covid cases happened from people who were outdoors um so we're kind of banking on that because nobody was wearing masks that's how it rolls. We wore masks the first day and then, yeah, didn't last, didn't stick. And it was weird. I get it. It was weird too, like, because I had to, because I was coming back into, um, coming back, because we were only like an hour away. Um, so I was coming back uh, to like feed the cats and stuff and I had to go to the grocery store. So it was weird, like being somewhere where nobody was wearing a mask and then go to the grocery store where everyone is wearing masks and seeing people wearing masks around the street. And it was, it was, it was an odd thing. And now like, like for a few days, we like, like the virus didn't exist and now we're back and now the virus exists again. Yeah. Was it nice to have that like camping reprieve though? Yeah. Oh my word. Holy cow. <laughs> Here we are. The tour here. of I'm Gary's house. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, who knows? Hopefully hopefully everything's fine. I'm sure it is. If not, you will have tested the system. Yeah. Ugh. You're like you're like the raptor in Jurassic Park that tests for weaknesses on the fence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all know uh, how that <laughs> Yeah. Into the Raptor gets, I went to the, uh, electric went to the Raptor grocery system. store last night and came out to the van and realized there was no um, hand sanitizer in the van after buying a small amount of groceries before Rhonda left town. Usually mm-hmm. Saturday's our big grocery day, mm-hmm. but we can't do that this week because Rhonda will be gone and I'm not taking the kids, obviously, to the grocery store. So, all right. Well, stopgap. Thursday through Monday. And uh, I don't know, people were well behaved, but then I got back out to the car and like, there was that, oh no, there's no sanitizer. What do mm-hmm. I do? Um, and then I'm like, like I had already like unhooked my mask. So I'm like, now I don't want to use these contaminated hands to put my mask back on. So I drove home with it dangling off of one. It was, you know, <laughs> the, the, the brain is a terrible thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We live in an imperfect world. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, there That's were definitely so... moments. There are definitely moments um, over the weekend and coming back where, like, I'm like, uh, "Well, we're going with it." <laughs> uh, subtitle: Chris stares at his hand for several minutes. <laughs> for those of you who were not seeing the video, I lost uh, Zoom. Dang. Oh. I also think I had a bit too much coffee this morning. It's kind oh, of that's me a, a thing. Little, little jittery, yeah. I, I looked at the coffee pot. I brewed enough for what Ron and I typically drink. She took her to-go mug. I finished my regular amount of coffee, and there was still some in there. I'm like, well, I don't know what the logic was. You can't take it with you. I'm not sure. Like, it's coffee. <laughs> it's not like it's expensive. Like, it's I diluted, like, roasted beans and hot water. I mean, the, like, what are we talking here? A nickel, if that? 
So I drank it and, uh, and I can tell. Really? Was it like a half a cup or no? No, it was like almost a f- another full mug. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was I was picturing like I, the drags and I was like, I don't think that's going to make the difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, I, uh, I usually have two mugs of coffee, but like not to the top. Like it's probably like a mug and a half if we're being honest, you know? Uh, so this was like, mm, maybe this was like Gary thinking maybe if I, I drink this now when I make coffee tomorrow, I want to clean as much. I don't know, but I poured it and then I drank it. That's, and that's, as I was that drinking it, I'm my... going. So I do have news that I uh, didn't announce a while ago. This is from, gee, almost a month ago now, because at the beginning of the month. Uh, but um, uh, according to Apple Podcasts expansion, uh, Apple Podcasts, I got an email saying, Dear Podcast Creator, uh, Apple Podcasts is now uh, available in many 20 additional territories throughout Africa, Asia, Pacific, Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, and Oceania. So you can yes. now subscribe to our podcast in Afghanistan, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, all sorts of places. I didn't even know that we were in like the normal places, uh, but apparently we are. <laughs> uh, the entire catalog of over 1 million shows in more than 100 languages is now available in 175 countries or regions. So you can listen to us anywhere, basically. So a million shows, do you think our funky binary numbering is throwing off their count? <laughs> no. I do not think uh, Apple is that naive. Probably fair. I just, you know, maybe like, well, over a million shows. This is fantastic. And then, <laughs> realistically, it was like us and one other show. So maybe like, you know, a couple hundred episodes. No, I, I is, think y'all, it is so hot out. It's amazing. I, I think, I think they were probably going off of actual files. Uh, so now that, I can delete that email because that email was waiting for me to uh, to announce it on on the show. I lost two kids in that time I was outside. Not off to a good start. Okay, we're good. They're still here. <laughs> this is just a glimpse of your normal chaos. This is fine. <laughs> I will. I will say uh, too. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I don't think I talked about it. But uh, Alanis Morissette is postponed. Alanis Morissette and garbage and uh, Liz Fair. I I think that we should probably say something like, "Isn't that ironic?" Oh and, and no! And completely misuse the. Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself, Chris. You no. Know. I actually had a music reference that made sense for the first time in three years. So I was going for it, man. I'm bummed out for something that I didn't have tickets to. <laughs> well, it's possible but, if it comes around again that there will be more opportunities for tickets. Yeah. Well, no, my, my plan was is that like closer in, I was going to like keep my eye out and all that. Like, I think or, there's yeah. always shifting that happens. But yeah. I'll have to do that next year. Yeah, I think it's tentatively planned for for next summer or something. And I'm just hoping that garbage will tour on their own anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I it's it's hard to think about this uh, post like this going out into the world world like what next year is going to look like when all you're seeing is the inside of your room. Yeah. I mean, I even even like camping is like was very confined to like you know a specific area. I wasn't really out in the world either. Like, yeah, we were putting also we were putting off getting well, we were putting off getting Nick Cave tickets for various reasons, and then mm. we're like now we're like should we even get tickets because mm-hmm. it'll likely be canceled. But even if right. it doesn't, do we really want to go to an arena? Right. <laughs> Like, I I love that you ask that question, because um, I think that there's like this the media right has this propensity to to put out this like equivalency in positions, um, and there are dumb people out there that are maskless. I was gonna say I apologize for calling them dumb, but no, I don't. There are dumb people out there maskless making selfish decisions, and um, I think by and large that 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 realistically based on my like conversations with people is a, a large minority. And I think a very visible minority of people, you know, uh, even just, in Jacksonville, which is pretty, 
pretty red. I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like this concept of like, oh, we're gonna reopen everything is just cool. Who's gonna show up? Right? Like I think I think there's it's a, a real human thing to be like, no, I'm not cool being in crowds yet. So there's a concert uh scheduled for Saturday in uh Tooele County. Uh so so there's this concert. It's it's a it's specifically like to protest uh COVID restrictions. And originally it was going to be in this uh, town called Kaysville, which is kind of rural. Um, and it's like this country music star that I don't, I don't know. And they're going to invite all these businesses that have been like hit hard by, uh, you know, things shutting down and they're going to have masks and they're going to enforce social distancing. But uh, so, and the mayor approved of this thing, even though it uh, violated state and county restrictions and she got shot down by the city council and the city council like um uh issued a whatever it's called when you disagree with somebody but you do it officially uh dissent or whatever uh this and and then they also um said a strongly that, worded letter yeah they also said that they would cut off power and turn on the sprinklers during the concert uh if they if it went through so the concert organizer left and found another place which is now closer to salt lake city because twila is like maybe 30 40 minutes away um any town called grantsville uh which uh, and there is this arena there that apparently can seat up to a hundred thousand people and it's scheduled for friday or saturday uh, this saturday at 5 p.m and they're going through with it, even though Tooele County has said, no, this is illegal and we're going to like do things, but they haven't specified what things. The, the venue owner and the concert organizer are both like gung-ho, they're gonna do it anyway. So I will tell you exactly how this, uh, this conflict between people deciding to open things up and not uh, will run out because we kind of have a social experiment happening in Utah right now. Uh, and it will be, and it will be concluded one way or the other this weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see I mean, how it turns out. I get, I get like the argument people are saying, like, well, you can't infringe our right to gather. Like, okay, fine. I, I mean, you're absolutely right, but you're a dumbass. Is like the part that I think is lost in trying to have a civil conversation. <laughs> well, because you can't really Maybe have a civil a ball, conversation where, where you're Give a dumbass as part of it. It's not, it, it then degrades below civil, civilized. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's a fair point. But, but I, I, I'm not changing my position on this. Also, I need to prioritize the internet on this computer because it's laggy right now. <laughs> Get your priorities straight, Gary. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I, like, I've had so much tech problems in the last few weeks and... Oh, this is cool. I, according to um, Google, there are no devices on my uh, network right now. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. So unlike me, where there's like three of me, you just don't exist. <laughs> there's only one of you now. This is the wrong time for me to deal with that. How Thank goodness there's only device? one of me. I can only handle, I can oh, barely handle. Oh, I was bringing a topic this week. Ha ha. I have a topic. I was going to ask because I have one up my sleeve. Just No, I have one. I have one. Uh, I was going to bring a topic. I have a topic. Uh, the topic for the day is Ponsne. Ooh. Oh, I see why the kids are downloading TV shows. Could you spell it? Yes, I can. Uh, let me find my tab that has it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Uh, it is spelled P I N C E hyphen N-E-Z, Ponsne. P-I-N-C-E? <laughs> yes, it's spelled Pinsnez, but you say it Ponsne. Is it, is it French? Yeah, that would be, that would <laughs> I be really... a relatively uh, good, uh, yes, suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were, that would be a relatively dumb question, is where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> well... I, it was it was for confirmation. Um, this, actually, this, this I think topic, that is uh, this topic cool. came up uh, in my world uh, because I've I'm now in a post critical role 
world and I'm trying to find other things to watch and, and or listen to. And so this came as a result of watching other shit. Um, hmm. Hmm. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, this is a Creole dish of food um, with, uh, damn, I'm hungry already. With, uh, with rice. As soon as you mentioned it, I was like, he's just hungry. <laughs> That's it. That's every episode now. <laughs> oh, we haven't recorded in three weeks? Gary's hungry. <laughs> Gary's hungry. <laughs> um, but like something, uh, something with rice, uh, it's vegetarian, for sure. Um, for sure. But it has that dash of cardamom, right? Mm. Yeah. Why not? I think I actually know what this is. Oh, I, I would not oh. be I would not be shocked. Um, but I do like the idea of a Creole dish with just like a dash of cardamom in it to like mess up all the other spices that are. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, and I thought about what that would taste like, and I thought maybe I don't know what cardamom tastes like. But now that you say that. Like, okay, the unsettled feeling that I had was appropriate. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, like, Thank sometimes you for clarifying. I love cardamom and I love adding it to things, but I don't know if a Creole situation would be the appropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. Well, so what do you think that you know it is? I think I can't communicate. it's can't like, communicate. and I'm. I'm either I'm either horribly wrong, but that's okay. I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. Because I feel like it's like a steampunk. Well, this is like my knowledge of it. It's like a steampunky, like when they have like how do you how do you explain it? It's like two monocles, but no like no things, and it just like perches and like oh. pinches. <laughs> right so those of us that aren't steampunkers would um obviously remember this as uh the sunglasses from the matrix that um uh what's yeah i guess that's kind of what i'm trying to describe i don't know but not sunglasses in this case uh, what is his name morpheus morpheus but the actor is oh, i want to say uh, fishburne denzel yeah lawrence fishburne Fishburn, it is Fishburn. Yeah. I was thinking Fishburt, and I knew that wasn't it, so I didn't want to blurt that out. <laughs> and I don't, didn't have the Lawrence at all. I was like, somebody Bert, Fishburt. Bert Fishburt. <laughs> uh, so two things. Uh, one, the reason why I know it's Lawrence Fishburn is because um, uh, very secret. Um, those were, Lawrence and then Fishburn were the code names of the theme that the USA Today, USA Today Sports uh, website runs. Uh, so the original version was Fishburn, and then when they redid it, it was called Lawrence. So that's the only reason, pretty much, why I know uh, that it's Lawrence Fishburn. Are there any Easter eggs in there? <sighs> Maybe in the code, but I don't, not in the, not like if you go to the website, I don't think. I love weird naming things like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't know, I don't know why they doubled down and just didn't come up with something else other than lack of creativity. Um, so second thing. Um, it's not steampunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I was thinking but you are not wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, a pince nez is a type of spectacles that just rests on your nose. Usually it, it, it pince means pinch and nez means nose. So it's pince nez. So it pinches your nose and there's different types of pince nez. Oh, so does French. Yeah. There's different types of pince nez. <laughs> um, they were popular in the 19th and 20th centuries, which is the reason why it overlaps with the steampunk thing, because that's also generally okay. the time frame where steampunky things kind of like, theme thematically it fits into steampunk, like with like weird hats and like okay. yeah, I mean it, it, yeah. it is, but it's not like a steampunk specific. Yeah. <laughs> I just that's, that's that's famously famously Teddy everybody. Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt has a pince nez. Like it's not like <laughs> well. 
famed time a traveler, fat, Teddy Roosevelt. Yes, famed time traveler. Uh, also, if you go to the Wikipedia page, it's got a picture of Anton Chekhov, uh, who also has a ponce. And sometimes they had a little, like, a, a, a ring down here that has a chain attached. And you can attach the chain to your jacket. So if it does fall off your face, then it just dangles from the chain. Or you could take it off and then not lose it. So you put it in the pocket or something. There were several different types of ponce. Uh, there were the kind that had a rivet in the middle. And it's sort of like adjusted up and down. Uh, so you just sort of like, uh, and then there is a kind that had that sort of had like this spring action thing over the top and then hold the, held the two, uh, the two sides separately. And so they like, it was the spring on the top that kind of held them together. Uh, there was a, an estig, which was supposed to help with astigmatism. Uh, which had, it, it held, the, the tension was in like the little nose guard things. Um, and oh, then there is one that was uh, popularized in America called the Fitzhugh, uh, which had these little, these little knobs in the front uh, where you could like sort of open and close it a little bit. Um, and then it would just kind of, you do that and, go, and then it would fit on your nose. Oh, so what's... Okay. And then there is um, also, there's also the Oxford spectacles, which are sort of categorized as a separate thing, but really they're just like um, more like the sea bridge, which is the one that has the thing that goes over the top because it's sort of made the same. Oh. So famously, 19th, 20th century was before humanity evolved to have ears, which is why Bluetooth is such a new invention, obviously. <laughs> Uh, the reason why uh, the reason why I know about Ponce is because the so the Critical Role team is not recording new shows anymore. They're not recording the uh, the campaign anymore, the D and D campaign. Um, so instead, they're trying to find other things to make content. And they started doing this thing called narrative telephone, uh, where one person uh, tells a story, like maybe like a two hundred word, five hundred word story, uh, and then they play telephone. So the person does the story and then the next person and so it records it and then it passes on to the next person who then records their version of the story, trying to get all the details or whatever. They record it, they send it on to the next person and so on and so on and so on. And so the story sort of degenerates. And one of the stories was about somebody who had a ponce mm. I don't which even then, know if- Which then by the end of the telephone game became a Putnam. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bizarre. <laughs> because only well, one person that idea, in the entire though. group, and it was the person who wrote the story, only one person in the entire group knew what a Ponce name was. My first, hearing it out loud, my first thing was like a clothespin was what I was thinking of. Because I was like, oh, it's like pinch. Like, I was just a rudimentary. It's, it's your Canadian coming out. There it is. No. Canadian. <laughs> Can we just talk about how red her hair is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like your hair? What do you say? You're just gonna, gonna hide my face in your sh in your. Also, is is that like an upside down headband situation? Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. hey, I gosh. I'm kind of digging that. I'm like, why don't I do it like that? <laughs> So now that you broke, uh, now that you broke the game by guessing it too early. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, did, I, I, I was just going to say, I love that I thought it was steampunk just because it was like associated with like monocles and top hats and mm -hmm. like <laughs> other mechanical things. Yes. Yes. As if, as if those things didn't ex actually exist in history and only exist in steampunk fiction. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just never really didn't really ever look into it <laughs> yeah no it's a it's a it's a pretty cool do you, pretty cool do i you thought it was a pretty that, cool topic do you think you get a lot of fingerprints on your lenses with those uh not if you're wearing them correctly i mean mm -hmm. i i think that you could but like the idea is that you're doing like you're holding it from these other things around it I wonder why people don't wear them anymore. Um, I don't know. Like the, I mean, I am. I imagine that something that rests on your nose and ears, uh, and the weight of the things supported on those different things is that's probably true. more comfortable than something that's pinching your nose all day. Yeah. Um, but how about get a clothespin and just put it right here? Just to it see. did. It did imply that that 
some of them were comfortable. significantly more comfortable and therefore more popular than others. And um, uh, it did imply again, like, to- they're wearing wooden teeth and like- Yeah, that's things. true, yeah. <laughs> like- <laughs> Um, it did. It also imply too that that some of them were helpful in correcting or uh, correcting for astigmatisms um, based on like the way that they were, like they fit on your nose or the way that you can like rotate the uh, the lenses. Um, so I mean, it, they seem like a pretty decent invention. Mm -hmm. And then we put these things on the side and. Yeah, the thing on the side to like catch them when they fall seems crucial to me. Yeah, that's pretty. That was pretty. I, I feel like I would want that like attached to some kind of body piercing, like my ear or like oh, nose God. or something. Like I feel like that would be well. Yeah, so like they fall off your nose and then they just dangle there and you pick them back up. That seems <laughs> like a, a current reincarnation. Probably. It's sure. Very hard to hold a conversation with you. Yeah, Gary. I mean, Gary, you can. Today it's very hard to hold a conversation with me, and I have no facial piercings or anything dangling <laughs> off my face. You can't help that you're just the center of gravity right now for <laughs> everyone wanting. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, you brought the iPad in. Great. How did you get that? <laughs> it's like, I know time has passed, but she's still a baby in my mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, she's walking. I'm like, yes, Allison. That's what happens. That's what happens when oh time God, walking, happens. Climbing. Yeah. Unless actually she's a time traveler. Are you a time traveler, Charlotte? Charlotte, are you a time traveler? <laughs> yeah. She said, yep. Yep. I was going to say, I was like, it's like a cop. They have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a time traveler, you have to tell me. Yep. So that's Ponsnay. Pincenez. Hmm. I have a hundred and fifty some odd day streak in French now. Wow. Your French is going to be better than me then. I don't, I've got nothing. I've got like a good food vocabulary for when the can faces the wrong way. <laughs> Do you find that that's helpful in like, well, in learning food? Oh, yes. Learning food French that like you already recognize like the logo and the brand. So when it's facing the wrong way, you're like, oh, it's still peanut butter, even though it doesn't say it. Oh, or... uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good. I just, my French pronunciation is horrible. I wouldn't. Well, my French it. pronunciation is horrible too. And Duolingo doesn't do very much to correct that. Yeah, I took like, I, uh, what was that? Two years ago, I took like an introductory French course, which was really helpful. Um, but like, I didn't keep up with it. And people here aren't speaking French. It's not yeah. like a thing. So unless you go, unless your kid goes to a French immersion school. Um, so I've overheard some families in the neighborhood speaking French, but. Did, I'm sorry, you said a French what school? Oh, immersion. a French immersion school. So immersion. in Ontario, at least, there's a lot of you kind of can choose a path and your kid can go to French immersion. And so then it's like, I'm not quite sure the ratio, but it might be half and half. So half their classes are taught in French and half of them are in English. That's cool. Yeah. I thought you said French conversion and I thought that I was missing <laughs> something culturally. I'm like, wait, I didn't, I thought it was, I, I don't know what I thought. I thought it was another language, but I- You are now French. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, French, French immersion is where you get a bucket of water <laughs> that, has, that has the word French on it. And then you shove your kid into that and you just leave them there for yeah. four years. Just for Yeah, but only the evangelicals, like the more traditionalists are just find sprinkling water on and calling it. Uh, and some of them, That's some of the weird. more modern ones in, in this particular, uh, this particular climate, some, some of the more modern French immersions uh, will use a squirt gun. I love that photo. <laughs> Low contact. So good. It is really helpful though, not the squirt gun, the French immersion, because there are like Ottawa, if you go to Ottawa, most jobs require you to be bilingual. Um, so it, it definitely opens up your options job wise, as well as just like, it's a good to know. Or if you ever move to Quebec. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could uh, actually say a sentence, but I mean, I don't know. It's there in my head and it's there when I'm doing Duolingo in the context of Duolingo. And so I don't know, like I never thought when I went to Italy, I was like, I forgot all my Italian. And then I ended up like knowing a lot more than I thought I did. So I feel mm -hmm. like it probably would end up being the same if I was confronted with it at this point, but like, it doesn't feel like I know 
anything. Yeah. I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't, I'm not confronted with being, with using it at all ever. So. Like I was like, you said peanut butter and I was like, let's see. Nope. Don't know peanut and don't know butter. So that would be bad. <laughs> well, unless you were like comfortable eating something else. <laughs> You just, you, you really have to order off the menu based on your vocabulary. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, yeah, jeez. Hmm. Uh, we don't have any listener questions. Uh, we, I was about to say, we thank do you all have... for carrying the show today, as I have been here in person, and on occasion I have even participated. We Otherwise, I'm have, just like the big sideshow. So we do have a contact. Uh, it wasn't Wonderful exactly a listening question, but as as longtime listeners of the show will know, that any email we get, we read on the air. So uh, this is from Emily, uh, who Ooh. says hi. Uh, I smiley face. Uh, I saw that you. I saw that you link to peta.org in episode one zero one zero zero one Halloween or Christmas. And I was wondering if there's anything I can do for you to get a mention like that too. Um, I don't remember you just the did. context. Congratulations! This is I don't not the, the I was context about, in which so. we linked to Peta, but it probably was maybe in the context of Guar um, <laughs> and the Guar, the Peta videos that Guar did. Um, nice pull. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot about so uh, her website is doggydesigner.com. Uh, and Doggy I, guess, designer I don't know what that is, but there's the mention and um, D O G G Y D O G G I E. Oh, designer. get the Y, huh? Yeah, no, D O G G I E. Yeah. yeah, all right. Um, well, put it in your web browser, people, and we're not responsible for the malware it tries to not at all, not responsible today. at all. And maybe it's just uh, PETA videos starring members of Gore. <laughs> How funny would it be if Emily were actually a listener? And this contact came in. Well, she should be very excited then. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm calling her a spammer, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say she's probably not. Uh, no, I think that's a fair assumption. <laughs> I think that's a very fair assumption. Oh, yeah. However, when we get emails that are digging that deep into the archive, they're probably not listeners. They're probably yeah. going with like long tail content. How funny is that? Oh, I was googling, and on page thirteen thousand four hundred two, I found that you have a link to PETA. This piques my interest. And PETA is vaguely pet related, so yeah. <laughs> it is contextual to my business. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, SEO scams still exist. Yeah. That's what we learned from yep. this. They didn't stop oh, existing. Man. Man. <sighs> Real listeners would always mention the Dyson sphere. That's true. That's true. That's that secret password. And frequently do. Yeah. <laughs> we had hot dogs the other night for the first time in I don't know how long, and I set it on the bun, put mustard on it, and thought about this ice sphere for a minute. Like, just shut up and eat your dinner, Gary. <laughs> so you know, your family doesn't want to hear about the Dyson sphere anymore. I remember. What about hot dogs? I remember watching. Uh, oh. Our I remember fourth, watching our Mr. Wizard. contributor to the podcast to Charlotte today. Yeah. I remember watching Mr. Wizard as a kid, and there was one episode where they electrocuted a hot dog um, to cook it. <laughs> stop. I mean, go, but stop. I like this. <laughs> um, and what happens to a hot dog when it's electrocuted is it kind of turns into a Dyson sphere. It sort of like puffs out and like bubbles in like a really weird way. So oh, uh, gonna we're going to have like dinner home. experience with yeah, Dad. Gary's going to try this at home now. Um, yes. uh, I wonder what kind of voltage I need to stick through this thing. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not very high. I, I would yeah. recommend not very high. Because you have like big old like non-conductive gloves standing yeah. in the backyard with like jumper cables and like snapping them at the end of a hot dog. Yeah, I think what How they did. How do you want this? I think they. I think they stuck like metal, metal like prongs in either end, and then they stuck like yeah, the jumper cables on on both sides and connected that to like a battery yeah. or something. I would assume it's got to be DC current. But it could be alternating. <laughs> I love that we're waving like it's actually going to make sense to us. <laughs> we're like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's just wait for her to finish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fair. 
We we want we want to give all the members of the podcast equal airtime. Yeah. I was talking about hot dogs and she was very excited. Like, what where are they? <laughs> Hook me up, Dan. Sometimes that's a life lesson. Sometimes you just talk about hot dogs, but there aren't actually any hot dogs. Yeah, that's true. Jeez. I've got that tattooed in my arm, actually. <laughs> just a <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a whole sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. It's in old English lettering, so it's really I don't know, something. Really There's something. a Ponce Day involved somewhere. Yeah, there could be a cartoon hot dog <laughs> wearing a Ponce Day. I was gonna say, I was gonna say the, the planter's peanut guy has a Ponce Day, but no, he has a monocle. Uh yes. Yeah. If you if you um I I was going somewhere dumb. I'm stopping. Okay. Actually, I think my internet froze. No. Did I lose you? No. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Of all the times for it to freeze, that <laughs> would have been welcome. Right then, you were just it. sitting stunned, <laughs> stunned and waiting. Just waiting for the waiting for the content. Oh, it was so bad. I was thinking about like if you were blind in one eye, like could you get a discount on a pince nez, and then like sell the other lens. I don't. Not, like I, I said, I'm not sure. Get a monocle then. Yeah, just get a monocle. Yeah, but but I feel like the monocles like don't kind hold of HSA in scam you could run in the U.S. because medical stuff is stupid here. It, again, there... my ridiculous worldview, based on where I was born, has screwed up everything. Is there a different name for when the monocle has like the little stick on it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like when I do know what you like, mean. It's just like reading glasses, but they're like, it's like usually like older ladies. I did not do research on monocles. <laughs> it's the one gap in our, in, in our optometrist lesson. Uh, however, monocles are linked from the Ponce Ney uh, Wikipedia. Dude, quit it. Uh, let's see. These people live here. Do, not do, here. Do. No, it looks like they're probably just still called monocles. Yeah. Yeah. What's the uh, French word for hand? A hand? M mon? I have no idea. Mon? I think. So mon to monocle? Sounds about right to me. <laughs> right. I was really trying to time this so that when I said that, the episode would be over. Uh, it is, however, <laughs> however, Ellie, however, a, uh, a, a pince nez with a little stick is called a lorgnette. Or oh. Lorgnet. Or Lord's Oh, I used yeah. to watch that cartoon when I was a kid. Uh, it's a pair of spectacles with a handle. They used to hold them in place. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.